Good evening. Welcome, everyone. And it's also very much my pleasure to welcome our guest, Colonel Mohammed Gaddafi of Libya. Salam alaikum. I'm Dr. Ali Abrahimi. I'm a research fellow at LSE Global Governance. And I'll be chairing this event on behalf of uh, Howard Davies, the LSE's director, who unfortunately couldn't make it this evening, but has sent the following message. You're most welcome here, Colonel Gaddafi. We wish you'd been able to deliver uh, some Libyan weather at the same time. This is a message from Howard Davies. We're pleased you've been asked to help in the process of training Libyan officials to manage a fast-developing economy, and we very much hope that the relationship will continue. So, Born in 1942, near the town of Sirt, Colonel Gaddafi came to power in Libya in 1969, making the world's longest-serving national leader. He developed his own ideological framework, a third way distinct from capitalism and socialism, which includes the unique structure of government, and which was published in the three volumes of the Green Book. On the regional and world stage, Colonel Gaddafi has championed pan-Arabism, pan-Africanism, and pan-Islamism. His lecture tonight will examine Libya's place in the world and the world economy. Colonel Gaddafi will deliver his remarks for up to 30 minutes, and this will be followed by the opportunity for questions from the audience. So, I'll give you the opportunity to ask questions. ولتلقي الإجابات فإذا نقض الآن المنصة لك قدرة سيد قائد شكرا مساء الخير I send my greetings to you and to this um, uh, distinguished um, uh, uh, university which uh, respect, which re deserves respect and uh, praise. Uh, it is respected by about, it has students from about 140 countries in the world and they speak different languages of the world. In, and it, it's offering um, social, economic sciences and, and political sciences. I send my greetings to this, to this uh, international uh, university, which is very well known. And I'm prepared to listen to your questions, if you have any. And I would like to, uh, to, to, to start answering any questions that you uh, uh, pose. Hello, Hello, Mr. Gaddafi. Mm. I'm a fellow student of the LSC. I understand. I understand. And my question, my question is, is what, what is Libya's position, position in the world? The world? Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Libya. Uh, geographically, it's where it's middle in the middle of the world, <laughs> between the Mediterranean and Mediterranean Sea, and, and and it goes deep to the depths of the African continent. So it is a link between and in the main gate with the bet between the Mediterranean, Europe and Africa. It is a producer of oil and gas and it contains companies of many nationalities which work in, in the um, sector of oil, industry of oil. Uh, jo uh, historically it has a strategic position. Libya has been subjected to more than 13 invasions from the Mediterranean. All tried to occupy its territories. And recently, it was subjected in 1986 to, to a brutal attack by the American President Reagan and, and uh, the um, British Prime Minister, Thatcher. 
تعرض أربعين طائرة بوينغ تحمل فورتي. بالوقود اللي تزود هذه الطائرات and there were 40 بوينغ planes which, which fueled or carried fuel for these planes ونحن نيام في الليل and we were sleeping at night when this happened in, the, in April 1986 and our children were asleep and this brutal attack started by the Americans and the British with the help of the sixth Fleet. And they, they killed my daughter and they killed many children. And, and this caused a lot of uh, devastation to the Libyan people. And I'm sure uh, they, they, were, they made sure that uh, Gaddafi was killed and they said so. But of course, the, the will of God, Allah, the Almighty, uh, is not the same as the will of Regan. Or, or, and, and this campaign was, was a failure. The last invasion that was on Libya since the, since the Roman Empire until the, now the, 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 the American Empire, Libya has played a big role in the liberation of Africa and in supporting the um, liberation um, movements and these movements have, um, have um, uh, succeeded and now we are fighting uh, Terrorists like supported uh, President Mandela, Zimbabwe, and and the presidents of uh, and leaders of of Africa, uh, like the, the the leaders of Namibia and, and Guinea Bissau and and the and Angola and all of these the leaders of these countries were in Libya and uh, so we are responsible to for the support of the liberation movements and Africa has been liberated so the colonialists consider that uh, that uh, they, they, they had they, they tried to sanction and put sanctions on Libya and to boycott Libya but, but the, the liberation is, is a sacred right against all the invaders of our countries and colonialists consider this as a, a terrorism but of course they, they described Gaddafi as being a terrorist and the reason is that we support the liberation movements. But now Libya after the liberation battle with the, we are working in, for peace and, and we are leading the process of peace on, on, the, um, on the Libyan side, on, on the international arena as well. And I advise you that you visit the, on the internet the, the website Gaddafi Speaks. GaddafiSpeaks.org, uh, and you, where you can read my um, opinions, my philosophical um, uh, viewpoints, and on this website you can see uh, plenty of my ideas. And every, uh, even this le this lecture and this meeting with you will be uh, will be aired or will be uh, uh, published on this website, and this um, meeting with you is also recorded at this website. Thank you. أنا من البرازيل. أنا أريد أن أضيف عن 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 انتخاب رئيسنا الحسين والعلاقات بين ليبيا والبرازيل كيف هي الآن؟ العلاقات جيدة جدا. Initially, they are already very good. Not only now, but after the after our friend Lula has been in power, the relations are very good and and very strong. And now, and our friend Lula 
Yeah, the, our, our, your friend is also on, on the same line with Lula, and, and the relations are very good and strong. And, and the relationship of Libya with Latin America in general is good. And now Latin America is starting to get rid of the all the the, the, the economy and the domination of the Americans, and they are starting to liberate themselves. This is this is what I'm saying about the relations between Libya and Brazil. They are excellent. Uh, my name is Kamchuk, I'm Nigerian. Nigerian. And I'm in Nigeria. In 2009, after your election, as the chairman of the African Union in Ethiopia, he called for several states to promote the needs of the United States of Africa. Well, I'm sorry, 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 أيد بعض الرؤساء ذلك بينما بعض الرؤساء لم لم باتوا صامتين فكيف تخططون للعمل على تحقيق هذا الاتحاد؟ At any rate, the whole world is changing now to, to, to large spaces like in this map that you've seen. Have you, have you shown this map? Yes, that's the map. You can see this map. It, it represents the, the future map of the whole world. I mean, the whole world is, is, is changing into its turning into a group of, of seven or eight groups or, or, or unions or if you like like North America, Latin America, Africa, European Union, the Russian Union, uh, Asia, China and the India and Bangladesh and so on. This, this region, like in Sri Lanka and, and so on, these are also... The, this world, this is the map of the world, uh, which is going to happen in the future. Uh, any national state will not survive. The survival will be only for unions. So the African um, uh, states should should unite also like just like the United States of America, like the uh, Europe, the, the Russian Federation, and like China. And anyone who doesn't believe in this is just ignorant, ignorant, and is backward thinking. And the African states, if 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 they if they are go backward and they don't integrate into one union, which is the uh, union of uh, African states, I think the the, 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 the the that state or that country will die. Unfortunately, some of the African presidents do not think except about themselves and about elections and so on and about the, the, the duration of the elections and and, the, and then after that they are not interested in the uh, uh, affairs of the African continent. They only have interest during the elections but after that they ignore it. This, this is the position of the world now. I'm working with the peoples of the African continent to unite the African states. I know that the peoples do want union, uh, and in like, there should be a, a, a uni union government in Africa. And but we are faced by a group, by some people, some people who are short-sighted, and. This, this causes damage to the peoples of, of Africa and it wastes their time. They have wasted 40 years in order to, to set up the union without any debate. But now after 10 years of, uh, of setting up the union, we are still uh, standing still. We are still in our place. Uh, I now address the whole uh, masses and peoples in Africa 
so that they can push the leaders and the rulers to, and to, to move them out and let the peoples take their place because the African youth, especially the youth and, and men and women are invited to, 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 uh, to, to press on, to cause the, the people's pressure on, on the hesitant leaders and rulers so that we can go to the Union straight away, or they have to move aside from power. This is what I invite you to do, especially the, tooth, the youth of Africa, and this is my call to all of them. Otherwise, Africa will always start, will stay in the background and, and leave place to the others to, to take lead. Thank you. Hello, Hello, Mr. President. I am Ali Jafarov from Azerbaijan. I see my country, my country in your map uh, within uh, Russia. So do you think that uh, Russia will invade my country? Or, will it become, uh, or do you think that there will be a unification of former Soviet Union Republic? Russia will take control over these countries again? Uh, I don't Azerbaijan Republic is a post-Soviet country. Thank you. The Soviet Union was after the the Bolshevik uh, revolution, it was, it was a voluntary union, about 15 nationalities or 15 ethnic groups uh, were all integrated in one union, what was, sold, what was called the Soviet Union. It was a very strong power, the Soviet Union, of course, and it was a deterrent to to America, to the Americans, and to the um, uh, NATO, and peace. Uh, made a peace uh, continued after the Second World War until the start of the 90s. I mean, until the end of the, or the collapse of the Soviet Union. So the world peace was was there only because of the uh, presence of the Soviet Union and the uh, and, uh, Warsaw Pact. So I mean, the, the Soviet Union was uh, like a balance against the the other uh, the other party, which is the uh, United States of America. Uh, unfortunately. After the collapse of the Soviet Union and its um, fragmentation, and and these these socialist republics and the uh, and so the Warsaw Pact, there was no deterrent against the imperialism, and therefore America changed into a colonialist power, and they colonialized the uh, Iraq without right, without unlawfully, and and they killed its, its president, they hanging by hanging the president of Iraq, and they, and they displaced millions of Iraqi people, and, and the, and the uh, oil wells and so on, all of these were destructed, and, and even these archaeological sites were destroyed by the airplanes and by the artillery, and this is this was all caused by the American uh, forces. This, this wouldn't have happened if, if the Soviet Union was still there, but because the uh, Soviet Union did not go out of its borders to invade other countries. After that, Americans went into Afghanistan and they bombarded Pakistan and as if the target is to destroy the green line in the world which is the which is Islam and and the Islamic culture and civilization now all the bombardment is is um, con is concentrated on the green line which is Somalia Afghanistan Pakistan Iran the Iraq Yemen 
It's clear enough that the green line in the world which represents Islam is now being burnt and bombarded and to wipe it out of the world map. And this is a strategy, an imperialist strategy, which looks like, like the, the, the imperialism of Hitler and Napoleon and, and, and Holako and Genghis Khan in, in, the, in the previous, in the old days in the old times. I mean, the Soviet Union it will not come back like it was before, but the, but the need is now to have a new relation between the previous uh, uh, republics of the Soviet Union so that they, they keep their survival, they keep their presence and they keep their security and to have a strong economy and, and a good market among themselves so that they don't to, so that they don't go follow like other countries after, after the collapse of the Soviet Union they became like the target of greed from other countries now America has greed has has you know in it has their, their bad uh, intentions to Azerbaijan and or Ukraine and and maybe even their, their neighbors, the other, the other republics, they have the, 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 the bad intentions for these small countries. Uh, well, I'm, I'm speaking about America before Obama. Obama, of course, is another personality. He is not imperialist, and he is not a Yankee. And he, does, doesn't want doesn't want to involve his country in losing wars and battles he would like he doesn't like to, to keep the the um, American colonialism in Iraq and Afghanistan because America is being um, uh, exhausted in these uh, illogical wars and they are just adventures one of the some of the adventures of, of, of Hitler like the adventures of Genghis Khan and, and Alexander the Macedonian and so on. These are adventurers who are remembered in the world history. Of course, I'm, I'm speaking about America before Obama. America now is a different America. It's, it's a wise and reasonable America, and I support him very well. Anyway, I hope that Obama stays for eight years, and after that, the, the imperialist powers in America will probably destroy the world. Uh, otherwise, well, the Soviet Union would, would, would have been a deterrent. I mean, when we speak about Rish, Russia only, Rush, Russia is trying to keep its security. If the Americans come to Azerbaijan or Ukraine or and so on, that would, that would uh, threaten the Russians, and this is dangerous for the Russians. So the, all that they are doing now is to, to protect themselves and to protect their security. And therefore, they do not allow these small republics, the previous republics of the um, Soviet Union, to be enemies to Russia. And this is a Russian position which is now at present. So it, it would be advised that, uh, like Azerbaijan and Ukraine and so on, who are neighboring the Russians, to have good relationships with the Federation of Russia, and uh, whether it, it would be like a confederation or a um, common market and uh, uh, shouldn't go to look for the protection from the Americans because this is a dangerous um, uh, threat and it might affect the security of the Russians. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, what is Libya's relationship with uh, Pakistan since it dipped in 1979 after the execution of the former Prime Minister? شكرا والله يا ابني طبعا انا يعني اشعر بالالم اي فيل فيري فيري ساد بالاسى حيال هذا الحادث ذس 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 انفورتشنت انسيدنت ويتش از ذا اكسكيوشن اوف ماي براذر 
عبد الفقار علي بوتو هذا الرجل الذي ذس مان انقذ باكستان هو ريسكيود باكستان بضغط حرج in in a very um, critical situation when there was a war between India and Pakistan. And, and after that war, the, the, the Bangladesh country emerged and he tried to protect Pakistan and he made a treaty, uh, a peace treaty with the, with the Indians in a very, very hard and difficult situation. He was the man who made Pakistan an, an atomic country. His execution was something uh, uh, brutal. It was intended for the purpose of, of, of uh, uh, the, 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 so that the leader of the army, the, the commander of the army, who is called um, his name is I don't remember his name Al-Haq or something like that Al-Haq Dia Al-Haq Dia Al-Haq He is the one who replaced Dulfikar Ali Bhutto so it was a problem of moving aside Bhutto in order to replace him this, this general who was the commander of the army it it, it seems that this accusation was just fabricated and even the ac execution itself he, Bruto is not, not a, a normal person he, it was a brutal execution uh, so uh, he wa they wanted him to disappear from the world and, and, and I, I, the, the Libyan people did not agree to, 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 to uh, removing this, this um, uh, ultimate um, execution or ultimate uh, penalty. My relationship with the uh, uh, Pakistani people is very good. They are all my brothers. But from that time, I did not visit Pakistan until now. And I would like to visit Pakistan, which has already executed Zulfikar al Adibus. Oh, I don't intend, sorry. My conscience would not allow me to visit this country because but, but my visit would be useful I, I mean still the relationships are, are are very good but myself psychologically I don't feel um, com comfortable to visit Pakistan after this incident of execution thank you السلام عليكم برادر ليدا أنا تلميذة ليبية وحضر الدكتوراه هنا في الإسي وأنا دراسة عن تاريخ الثورة عندما حضرتم إلى السلطة كان هناك تركيز على أن تكون ليبيا مناصرا للوحدة العربية وأنا أتساءل هل هذا ما تزال هذه نيتكم وثانيا الدكتور محمود المغربي الذي كان هنا في الصيف الماضي كان هناك بعض الناس تكلموا عن الثورة الليبية ويمكن أن نكون عندنا لقاء معه لإجراء الأبحاث حول هذا الموضوع Could you please repeat the question, the student? Could you please repeat the question a bit slower, please? Okay, Molly, maybe, maybe ask it again. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. Just in, in brief form. Uh, the first question was, was when you first came to power uh, a few years ago, there was a lot of focus on energy and getting the energy to unite and make our world. And I wonder whether you think this is still important and whether you actually still think it's possible to do. And secondly, how do you think it's possible to do? تكلمت مع الدكتور محمود المغربي. And I was just wondering how a girl from Tarhuna might be able to secure an interview with someone like yourself who knows about the history of your revolution for her research. Thank you. هل هل يمكن أن نتكلم مع سيد ترحوني لمناقشة تاريخ الثورة في الصيف القادم؟ هي عفوا تريد تتحدث عن الصيف القادم. 
كان سؤالها يتعلق إذا كان بالإمكان في المستقبل أن تجري مقابلة مع الأخ القائد لكي تنجز بحثها للدكتوراه والسؤال الأول كان عن الوحدة العربية نعم 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 شكرا واضح 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 بالنسبة لي المقابلة ما دام أنت يعني قائمة ب مفيدة وضروري if this is useful and necessary for you, for you to get this uh, doctorate, I would like to, uh, to uh, encourage you and support you. Uh, I would welcome meeting with you at the time that could be uh, determined afterwards. Uh, I would like to help you and I would, I would welcome meeting with you. With respect to the Arabic Arab Union, you know you are very aware that the Libyan revolution has uh, has one of its intentions, one of its goals it is to achieve Arab Union, and the Arab countries should unite, of course, because the Arab Union is is a must. The opportunities of our Arab neighbours. They have like a neighboring Iran, and they, tur they have Turkey also. Only the Arabs do not have one nation. They are divided into different countries. So there should be a big nation because Arab nationalism is not is not uh, embodied as one nation it is distributed or divided into many countries and they are just cotton or, or like superficial countries they are worthless and they are just uh, probably uh, familial uh, partnerships or familial uh, uh, parts and the colonialists have uh, uh, distributed these countries among the, um, uh, the royal families or the, the leaders and every country on its own is very weak so the Arabs can have can build a one big nation and, and after this they also need to, to go into a wider space into the African space or into the Asiatic space for example Turkey and, and the only Arab country and Iran maybe this this um, this space could uh, could form like a union, just like the European Union, if you like. The, although they have uh, different nationalities and different, uh, they have still a one union. There could be also the, the national, like Persian national and, and the uh, Turkish nationals and, and the Arab nationals. They might be in the future, they might form some sort of, yeah, so that the, the world will have respect to them. They should form like a confederation among themselves and uh, so that the Arabs will not be, for example, even even Arabs on their own would not be important if they, they unite. These, these countries are just cartonic. They are just the pawns in the chess game who are uh, manipulated by others. And I'm trying to unite the Arabs in one nation, if I can, but as you know, the, the, the Arabs are um, controlled by other countries. Other countries, they are just, just failing states, and they are um, backward states, and they are um, com uh, not, not from now, uh, from long ago, they, they are supporting, uh, yeah, because the colonist, colonialists have um, created these these small cartonic countries thank you thank, thank you very you much, much. Colonel Colonel Gaddafi. Gaddafi. it's a great, it's a great pleasure, pleasure to have this uh, lecture with you and to have this 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 lecture with you and
conference uh, with, between the European uh, Union and Africa that took place last week in Tripolis. Uh, do you think that European politicians understood your call and for ur like the urgency of the refugee problem you tried to address? Thank you. This uh, forms uh, a, a challenge, a dangerous challenge to the European Union. It's known that immigration is, is from the poor African countries. It's it's gate, and and the path is 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 from especially from Libya, and the final target is Europe. The destination is to go to Europe. They would like to block this gate. Otherwise, Europe will become a black country in the future. The, it wouldn't be Christian and wouldn't be European and so on. It would be only like a black continent and its religion might be mixed like Christian and Muslim. This is on the, on the one hand. On the other hand, the European countries do not have the, the will or the intention or to, they do not have the courage to, to face the immigration uh, seriously and 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 to, to 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 give some sacrifice to a certain extent now in order to stop this there should be a sacrifice in the future to stop it uh, so I offered that the first uh, the, the, uh, Libya should be provided with five billion euros every year in order to stop immigration through its gate because immigration is going through the Libyan gate because it extends to 2,000 kilometers wide facing the Mediterranean Sea and it overlooks uh, a number of many, many, many uh, African Af uh, countries like Egypt, uh, Chad, Niger, uh, Algeria, and all of these countries, they, they, they pr send immigrants to Libya and they go out fr through Libya to the sea and then to Italy and so on. Italy is the only uh, country l led by Berlus Berlusconi who took this problem seriously. And they contributed with the Libyans mutually only with in, in order not to stop the, the immigration completely, but to, to make a certain limit to it. But they are still not doing the, the whole lot. They, they are uh, complaining about this challenge, but they are not doing enough to face it. So, so in that conference, which was finished before yesterday in Tripoli, uh, the, the uh, European African Summit, I said, uh, I spoke about this uh, regard, and, and, and if you listen, uh, if you consider that Libya is a, is a gate of emigration, you should listen to the views of Libya, and, and to, to, you should respond to the requirements for, from Europe, what's required in order to help Libya to stop immigration. They took this into consideration, and they, and, and they said they are going to dis discuss it, and I will chase this with the, uh, the leadership of the European Union and the European leaders, uh, the, yes, leaders, because this is a dangerous phenomenon, a dangerous, uh, which, which looks like the, the, um, um, the climate problem around the world. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Colonel, Colonel, um, I, was I was wondering, wondering given, given the current, current uh, global, global diplomatic, diplomatic fallout over WikiLeaks, uh, uh, and the no, current no, uh, 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 on, uh, uh, on WikiLeaks, like, what are your personal views on it, and how do you think Libya will be affected by it? 
وهل اثرت هذه على ليبيا باي شكل من الاشكال؟ وشكرا. على اي حال انا انا مع الحريه. I'm for liberty. ولا وضد لجم الافواه او الافكار. And I'm against censorship and oppression. And this site is very useful in exposing uh, adventures, conspira conspiracies, and what goes on behind the scenes against individuals and peoples, and exposing uh, international hypocrisy over the, what happens what appears over the table and handing, hands extending under the table. This is a very useful site on the condition that, that whatever is published on it is true. Whereas if it publishes hearsay or um, stories or fabrications, then he would lose his face and its value. And it may be exploited by, hypocris by hypocrites and, and frauds who may try and sell him what they claim to be important documents that turn out to be fabrications and lies. Of course, he'll be subject to litigation. Before he exposed what the uh, U.S. embassies have written to Washington, about uh, various countries and uh, the view of the American embassies on those uh, rulers and their policies that exposes the hypocrisy that uh, affected the relationship of America and its allies and, and it was exposed on this site. And has shown that America isn't really as loyal to its allies and its friends. And of course, this is uh, is exposes the true American policy. I wish this site would continue to publish facts and these secret correspondence that expose hypocrisy on an international scale. However, however, whoever um, you know, discredits people will lose his credibility. And uh, there is nothing in it about Libya. I don't know if you have anything you heard about Libya from this site. But I'm, I'm quite happy to discuss it with you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Gaddafi, uh, your nation was drawn into the international spotlight most recently because of the controversy over the Al-Brahi and the Lockerbie affair. Could you please tell us what al health condition is at the moment and what his moral is like? And, and also understand he's uh, writing his memoir in an attempt to prove his innocence in the Lockerbie bombing. How do you feel about it? And very quickly, I'm aware that Tony Blair played a very important part in helping fashion Libya's new place in the world. Is Tony Blair still advising you and what kind of ongoing advice is Tony Blair providing? Is Tony Blair still advising you and what kind of ongoing advice is Tony Uh, the question wasn't very clear. I will try and answer as much as I could understood. 
Tony Blair. Uh, and uh, Tony, Tony Blair has absolutely no connection with Lockerbie case. This was uh, fabricated and created by by uh, Reagan and uh, Margaret Thatcher. They were the ones who created this conspiracy. And as it was evident from a book called uh, Secrets of uh, Heads of States that was uh, published by a French author that stated that whatever was said against Gaddafi and Libya was forced, lied, he exposed the uh, dialogue that occurred uh, between France and England uh, regarding Gaddafi uh, and Libya. And he showed that the Lockerbie was a, a fabricated situation. And he showed that the charges that were directed to Libya and to Gaddafi personally were based on uh, unfounded evidence, basically in an attempt to uh, uh, weaken the revolution in order to liberate its uh, resources and its abilities and to exploit it. And this and the Libyan revolution had awakened the African peoples uh, and the South American peoples and all these um, liberation movements and, uh, that were created to liberate these peoples. Uh, of course, the uh, col colonists, imperialists, would demean this uh, movement because they don't want these peoples to become liberated. And they wanted to silence the sound of the revolution in Libya and in order to eliminate the liberation movements worldwide. And this book actually exposed them. And it was clear that whatever was said against Libya was basically a fabrication. As they fabricated against Iraq about weapons of mass destruction, and after invading it and destroying the country, there was absolutely no sign of weapons of mass destruction. Uh, anyhow, Tony Blair is a friend. But he has no relationship with the authority or, and I meet with him every now and then. He is doing his best right now, to doing humane and charitable actions to try and help the Palestinian people. And he is trying to reduce the uh, siege around Gaza. And the problem between him and I was his invasion of Iraq. Because he f simply followed America in this unjust action. Which and, and destroying a, a, a country. Iraq is not the only one with weapons of mass destruction. The Israelis have him. Why weren't they invaded? So one person may own them and another can't. And these are double standards. And they do not perpetuate. Um, sound policies and peace in the world. And thank you. We're out, we're out of time, actually. Okay. Otherwise, um, uh, 
لقد سألت عن صحة عبد الباسط المغربي المقراحي المقراحي عفوا شفت أول ما جي شفته لكن بعدها ما عادش شفته وصحته طبعا تعبانة جدا يعني ومصاب بالسرطان وفي مراحل متقدمة و ومن أجل هذا هم أطلقوا صراحة لأنه يعني في هي was released because he's pretty much considered to be موتة. dead ولا زال على قيد الحياة ولكن although he's still alive يعني صحته but his health is quite deteriorated ناسف إنه هو في السجن لم and it's quite unfortunate that in prison he, his health wasn't looked after and he wasn't given appropriate examinations where he spent several years without any periodic examination and his family also even after he passes I hope for him to longevity and after he passes, his family will demand compensation. Because he was, he was with them, but they did not look after him as they should have. And they deliberately neglected him until the cancer got to a very advanced stage. Everyone considers him to be innocent. Uh, and it was quite evident from the site Wikipedia uh, and it's quite it, that site shown how that Lockerbie was a fabricated event thank you I'm sorry, that's all we have time for. The satellite link is actually going to uh, uh, end very soon. So uh, it leads for us to thank uh, the brother leader for taking the time to grapple with these questions. Um, as for all heads of state, we'd like to present you with an LSE cap. A cap was first given to your friend Nelson Mandela on his visit to the LSE. And since then, it's become something of a tradition for all heads of state and uh, recipients have included Bill Clinton, Kofi Annan, and the presidents of Russia and Chile. So we present this to your representative Khalid. Thank you for your well managed of this uh, operation. I thank the students and uh, those present for those very insightful questions that will benefit many and hopefully yourselves too. It honors me and pleases me that you are in contact with your university and I'm quite happy to lecture and explain my ideas over very critical issues that need to be discussed that will contribute to world peace. And I thank you for your excellent management of the university. Thank you.